Hey guys, my name is Palamore and welcome back to another video. Today we are going to be counting down some of WoW's coolest mounts that for the most part have completely fallen off the popularity charts. This list is completely based off of my opinions and experiences in the game and it will be listed higher on the list for the factors of how cool the mounts used to be and also of how little it's used nowadays. If you agree or disagree with some of the choices let me know in the comments down below and without further ado let's hop right into it. At number 10 on the list, we are coming in with the Ravenlord. The reason I have this one so low on the list here is because this absolutely was a beast of a mount back in the day, but in reality, it never really became boring. Blizzard just came out with much cooler skins of the same model for this guy in the form of the Achievement Mount, the Void Talon, and the Firelands version, so it sort of just got left behind as the least cool version of itself. Another big reason for this mount falling off is because flying in Azeroth came to WoW in Cataclysm and for the most part we don't really see many ground mounts in general after that change. This mount definitely was some eye candy back in Burning Crusade and Wrath of the Lich King expansions though so that's why it fits here on the list. For number 9 we are looking at the Jeweled Panthers that came out during the Mists of Pandaria expansion in the Jewel Crafting Profession. The reason I've decided to throw these in here is because I can really remember the hype around these guys in Mists of Pandaria. It seemed like if you didn't rock one of these back then, the only real reason was because you couldn't afford one. I think most players can agree that the cap mount models look really nice and smooth to ride on, so this cool gemstone theme definitely had its time in the spotlight. Not to mention the fact that they could also fly. It seems very, very rare to find one of these guys running around in today's game though, which is why we have it ranked at number 9. Okay, next up coming in for number 8, we have the ICC 10 and 25 man achievement reward mounts. These skeletal drakes were super cool, especially with the entire theme of the expansion, which was questionably one of the most fun to play all time, and they completely had their place. Actually obtaining these mounts back in Wrath of the Lich King was a huge flex in itself because these achievements were not super easy to do. To this day, these drakes are actually still quite unique, but they are way too incredibly easy to go grab now that it seems like every single noob has a pair of them. They for sure have their nice fit on our list though, so that's why they rank in at number 8. For number 7, we're staying in the Wrath of the Lich King timeline and we are looking at the Black War Bear and the Armored Brown Bear. So besides the original Amani War Bear, these were the first easy bear mounts to get in the game, and people loved them. I remember seeing these bears all over the place, and there'd always be somebody in trade chat desperately forming a For the Horde or a For the Alliance group to go and grab theirs. They fell off very fast, as I think it was mostly just an exciting new model to run around on, and it wasn't actually that cool in the first place. Coming in at number 6, we are going to head back over to the profession mounts, and I've decided to go with the engineering flying machines. These things were insanely cool back in Burning Crusade, especially with flying being fresh to the game and not the most massive flying mount pool to pick from. I remember even the small detail Blizzard put into the epic version of the flyer with the little Hulu doll you'd have to buy, and it would actually sit on your dashboard. It's nuts to think about how much Blizzard used to care about making cool things like this in the game compared to these days. Now they can't even make a unique armor set that doesn't make you look like a scuffed recolored mini Cthulhu. These flyers were super cool for quite some time, but I think they definitely fell off a lot as the new engineering mounts got added in over time, and now they're a lot more rare to find. Number 5 is going to be the epic Traveler's Tundra Mammoth. Now, any player that played back in Wrath of the Lich King is going to remember this bad boy. This guy costed a pretty penny back in the day, and that's because this was the first mount to actually hold vendors on the back side of it. This mount gave you instant access to a repairman and some supplies whenever you hopped onto it. Not only was that so incredibly convenient and cool, but you could also even kick the NPCs off and open up two spaces to carry around your friends. This mount was absolutely one of the coolest in the game at its time, but was completely overwritten in the game with the release of the Missa Pandaria version, the Grand Expedition Yak. This mount featured a repair bot as well, but also a transmogrification NPC on the back. Since both of these mounts were just purchased from vendors, this was sort of the instant upgrade for the mammoth. This mount was definitely innovative though, and really deserves its mention on the list because you'll almost never find somebody waddling around on it today. 
Now rocking up to number four on the list, we are looking at the Albino Drake. Any player of WoW that has ever been interested in collecting mounts or trying to get a specific mount probably knows about this guy. This mount was the achievement reward for obtaining 50 different unique mounts. Back in Wrath of the Lich King, there wasn't endless YouTube videos showing you how to quickly get 100 easy mounts in 10 minutes or whatever, uh, so you'd actually have to go out of your way for this guy. People who had this early on definitely had quite the flex. As more and more mounts got introduced into the game though, this mount became a freebie and entirely has lost its value. Unlike wine, mounts don't seem to age well. Unless we're talking about wine with an H, that's a baby crying and that does tend to age well. The baby usually stops crying as it becomes a young child and then eventually an adult. It rarely ever cries. Unless it sees the BFA expansion and how terribly done it was, then it cries a lot again. Anyways, this mount is so lame nowadays but fits right into the list because it was for sure cool at the time of its release. Now narrowing in at number 3, we are going to bring back the professions one last time and we are talking about the Sky Golem mount. This guy was super cool back in MOP and because it took so many days of real world time to be able to craft these things, they didn't become inflated too fast. They were one of the most unique models we'd ever seen come into the game and who didn't want to run around as a mini Optimus Prime? I think the only reason this mount fell off over time is because they recycled this idea too many times and they began to release way too many newer robotic mounts that were cooler. I almost never see players rocking this mount nowadays, but I will never forget all of the players flying around in this machine back in Missa Pandaria, which is why it deserves its spot at number 3 on the list. Now second to last, this one definitely suits the concept of the video. Coming in at number 2 on the list is the classical Bronze Drake. Now this one might be entirely biased because I had a friend who disagreed, but I totally remember back in Wrath of the Lich King when the speedrun Calling of Stratholme was somewhat prestigious and being able to time the dungeon for the mount alone was tricky. Then on top of that, to win this Drake out of 4 others rolling off against you, it felt so impossible to get. I'll never forget this mount and I remember the extreme amounts of excitement I got when I finally won the roll and got this bad boy. This mount was super super cool because it seemed like the only other obtainable drakes at the time were the netherwing drakes and I was much too stupid of a kid to know how to grind the reputation for those back then. This mount very quickly became a meme mount of Wrath of the Lich King near the end as gear progressed and obtaining this mount kind of became a joke. Nowadays, upcoming in Shadowlands, this thing is an embarrassment to pull out of your mount journal, which is why it's perfect here at number 2. Now number 1, lastly the mount we've all been waiting for, comes in the Ashes of Alar mount. The reason I went with Ashes is because this mount used to be literal god tier. Not only was it insanely hard to get, but it was also insanely rare to even drop. Anyone that had this mount in Burning Crusade was godlike, <laughs> and anyone with it in Wrath of the Lich King was still insane. As more and more expansions came out, this mount slowly drowned more and more. In Cataclysm, Blizzard decided to recycle the model and release the guild vendor version of the mount, and this seemed to be the last straw in terms of this mount being epic. Nowadays, this mount is still used a lot, but no one actually thinks it's cool anymore. It's sort of just used by more and more noobs that finally get theirs, and they just want to flex it for a week or two. I hope you found this video enjoyable guys, if you made it to this point, thank you so much for watching. I would really appreciate a like to help bump my videos up in the YouTube algorithm, and I hope you have a great day and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace guys.